We might be drunk, we might be drunk As long as we are hanging out, you know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Pet peeves, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk, we might be drunk Yeah Hiya! Here we are, folks, we're back in studio It's a balmy summer day in Manhattan What's shaking, sloppy jalopy? Good to see you, dude. You too. You got the uh, cold up top, warm down below look. Well, you know, you you rock a white shirt when it's raining out. You got to throw something over that shit. I just ran. First first cleaning in 11 years at the dentist. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was like shit. going in an attic. They were pulling out cobwebs and shit. <laughs> it's it's disgusting. Old porn. <laughs> yeah, like weird prom dress. A flashlight. What? Right. Right. Hot Wheels track. So... <laughs> How was it? Was it a nightmare? Yeah, you... it sucked. It was actually, oh, so I went two weeks ago and they had to schedule a second one because they were like, it was not, they're like, it's fine now, but it was like, you just got to come in more than once every uh, 11 years. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's crazy that I haven't because I have such an anxious mom who's always like, have you floss? And I was like, you were asking the wrong thing. Right. If you said, have you gone to the dentist? I would have been like, not in a decade plus. Yeah. But you take care. You brush twice a day and you floss. I don't floss, really. Oh, I thought you flossed. Yeah, unless my mom's listening. Then I floss every night, mother. I assumed all Jews flossed. Really? You, just see, you guys seem like flossers. Larry David's yeah. a big floss guy. Seinfeld's a floss guy. Yeah, I'm offended by that, by that generalization. <laughs> I'm offended <laughs> that you think I had it. my shit together that much. I mean, Cause I feel, Jews... not because Not because it's not nice, but it feels like you don't know me. Uh, yeah, I guess good I'm point. I'm wearing shorts with a flannel, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I just assumed. I mean, you're circumcised, right? <laughs> that wasn't my choice. Uh, <laughs> I, I was not consulted on that uh, decision. I thought Jews were flossing, and, uh, you know, you had your money taken care of, <laughs> and you went to bar mitzvah, and so all Those that. two are true, but the, right. but, the, but the flossing is... My mom, every day, vitamins and flossing, she will remind me, but I don't do... I. Occasionally I'll floss. Sometimes All I'll right. get the pickers. You know, when the, yes. those are a little more fun. I like a picker. It's kind of cinnamony, and you feel like a t- cool guy at least. You're not like, yeah, oh, that God, shit. I hate it. Hate flossing. My dad flosses religiously, and then he leaves the floss in the toilet. You know, it's just that green snake. Uh, I hate it. Awful. You see that? Oh, there's the pork shoulder. There's the uh, the granola. It's pork brutal. shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> My dad is an animal in the bathroom. He's a hairy, hairy shoulders. He pisses. He used My to dad's piss. hairy, too. Over me when I was a kid, I'd be peeing, and he would pee over my shoulder because he was—he's a big, big hulking Frenchman. That is—that's a ballsy move. Very open in the Norman household. Over the shoulder. Over the shoulder. Yeah. Some people sword fight. He was knighting me over there. <laughs> I was getting the uh, the Duke of Ellington. Sir Golden Shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Jesus. But yeah, flossing. It's a. It's like that Hedberg joke. He's like, you think. What people say it's hard to quit smoking. Yeah. It's actually harder to start flossing. That's great. It's so it's a perfect analogy. Perfect, perfect. And to take a, a take a hard quit and hard start is is a great technique. There, dentists are like con artists. So it's like a Ponzi yeah. scheme when you go there because I you know I have, I have a discoloration in my tooth and they're like you have to get that taken care of. It's like mm. a nerve trauma or something. You mm. must have been hit or something. Could it happen forever ago? And I said, all right, yeah, I'll do it. And uh, so I do it. And then they're like, and then you might want to come in and make the others yep. match. And I'm like, what is, who are you? The f- fucking wolf of uh, Wall Street here? <laughs> right, yeah. It's like the uh, it's like the mechanic. Like, hey, your Johnson rod is screwed up. You got to come back. And you you don't know anything. So you're like, oh, I guess my molar and canine and collapser or whatever the hell it is. it's more fucked up to do it with your health. Because you're like, a car, it's, like it's, a, it's, a, it's a material thing. True. With your health, you're like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I have to. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, ha- I was on my parents' dental plan, and I hated every minute. I hate that. I, I had braces for six years. I have real teeth trauma. Yeah. I had a gap in my teeth. I had to get it fixed, all that shit. I had to wear a retainer, the tightening, the rubber bands. Right, yeah. But, the rubber bands were rough. Oh, did you have braces? I did, but I was I was so young. Oh, okay. Yeah. Smart, smart. Yeah, I was in the prime of my high school years. Brutal. Yeah. So my point is, I would go to the dentist every six months. Yeah. Which is a kid, you're like, I'm back at the dentist again. And then they do the flossing and the cleaning, and they got the pick and that suction thing. Cosby's got a whole bit about it. Uh, they knock you out. They put you to sleep. <laughs> that was, yeah. that, he ended up using that one later, I think. <laughs> yeah, the laughing gas. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I haven't yeah. gone since. Like when I yeah. moved out to New York, I was like, 
fuck the dentist. And now I'm like, I guess I should go. Oh, yeah. You don't realize how good you have it. Is. I mean, I went to a dentist. They literally had to bribe you. They yes. were these dentists. They had video games there. What? You're playing like Pac-Man. I'm, I'm like, this is all. You don't want to get called in. Whoa. I never had that. You're playing, they're playing video games. They give you a little like slime hand you could throw. They give you what? like a, They like bribe you with toys. You know, because the, they were like more outside the box yeah, dentists. Yeah, I like this. You know, some doctors, they give you a lollipop on the way out. These guys, they're like, we got little, here's a little slime hand. So you're like, this is amazing. And it takes your head out of it because you're like, ah, the dentist, I hate it. And then you're like, fuck it. It tricks you. They should do that with a dog. Why doesn't, why doesn't Mount Sinai Hospital have like a PS5? Yeah, they're you always get, behind the times. Get, get a PS5 in that waiting room. Good point. Good point. That would ease a lot of kids' nerves. And we had the goddamn the block with the wire thing that you follow. Yeah. Remember that? Who's that for? What am I, Amish? Come on. It's awful. I, I think we that's what we Amazon doesn't pay taxes. You make Amazon send a bunch of PS5s to every hospital in the country. That way you're having a bad day. That takes your mind off. That's it. brilliant. I love it. Amazon, Bezos, if you come back from space. That's the first well, order out. of business. He's out of Amazon. What? He's done. What do you mean? He's walking away. What? Yeah, yeah. You didn't hear that? No. No, he's he's done. He just has enough money. He's like, what's the point? He's the richest person, yeah. I kind of respect that. Even after the divorce, he's like top two, I think. Yeah, I respect that because he's got all the money and he gets a ton of hate. So I would just be like, all right, I'll leave. I got all my billions and you guys can bicker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on Jupiter. It's weird. He's bringing his brother. Yeah. And you see one guy paid like 28 mil or something to go with him? No. Some rich guy's like, yeah, I want to go to space. <sighs> I mean, if, how long until they're fucking, by the way? I mean, once you're in space with no women and you have everything, you got to fuck this guy. There's prison gay and there's, uh, there's ultra rich <laughs> space gay. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, U.S. USR. <laughs> Ultra rich. Wait. You, uh, you are. USSR? No, USP. Gay, oh. USPG. <laughs> Ultra space. rich space gay. <laughs> USPG. Oh, mm. man. That's so true. Wow. What the fuck? Once you're in space for too long, yeah, it's like it's like prison. You what are we drinking, flip. by the oh. way? I don't even know. Speaking of the future. What do we got? Uh, I had these. Uh, Whitney Cummings introduced me to these. And, oh, wow. And me and Giannis got fucking hammered on these and you don't feel guilty there's not much of a hangover they taste great Hard they're actually kind of good for you but it's, <laughs> I don't six... think it's good for you well you got cultures and vitamins and uh it's you know no sugar yeah rip that puppy open i guess i should have gotten a four pack i got a sixer these are six percent alcohol by the way a Aca- acai berry remember when you learned that for the first time Wow. That and uh, quinoa. Those took me about six years to figure out. This looks it's probiotic. In that's the booze. that's so, what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah. I'm listening. June Shine for the folks at home. They actually sent me a free case after the Whitney pod, so I'm I'm a fan. Ooh, this smells good. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Hey, hey. That's... It's got a kick, but it's probiotic. I like it. Mmm. I had these once at uh, some comedy club. Was it? It was uh, Worcester. Mm. That comedy club in Worcester. Oh yeah. What's it called again? I know what you're talking about. They it's had downstairs. this, and I didn't love the one they had, but this is this is pretty good. Pretty good. Also, probiotic and antibiotic, both good. One of the rare things where they're both good. Ooh, that's interesting. Ah, uh-huh. you, T- you tweet you're it. <laughs> Uh, you see what we got in the mail too? No, what do, what do we got in the, the old podcast? Mail the Gotham bag. Studios here on uh, 38th Street. I'm really enjoying your new podcast. I've been following you separately for years. I'm glad you got together for this one. You talked about needing to try some new drinks and possibly building a bar, so I'm hoping this will come in handy. Wow. It's over 80 years old, so lots of inappropriate what? slang of the day. What? Cheers, Kenny Lipkins from Seattle. Oh my god. Look at this. Just cocktails. I'm holding it up if you're Wow. Yeah. It's wooden bound. And it's got just old timey cocktails. Whoa, look at that. Wow, this one's messed up. The uh the rape against your will. That really <laughs> these are really out of date and <laughs> holy time. shit. No, this is cool. It's got measure like look at this. This is like old timey. Wow. Yeah. That this is, is really cool. This is just, this would be fun to just have it. We're going to build a bar here, I think. Yeah, so please, folks, we're going to build this set into a bar because this is this is almost a dental 
waiting room at this point. So we need not the video games. Yeah, we need a PS5. We want uh, <laughs> send us anything. You got a you got a paddle that's like with a swastika on it, or, send that. or whatever you got a, a bar light, a neon light. Uh, I like the neon light. Yeah, hell yeah, anything a cigarette ashtray, whatever you get something bar. Now we're gonna get a neon swastika. No, I mean you can't you can't deny that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a good look look looking symbol. The neo Nazi bar. Anything like, good? Yeah, is, is... Anything in neon? I feel like is good. Doesn't that feel like a gay neo Nazi bar? Like people that just they hate <laughs> others, but they also kind of hate themselves. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. By the way, I I live in the village and it's Gay Pride Month. I am getting cat called like yeah. the world is ending. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean you got that that gay bar right across the street from you. What's the famous one? Uh, I got I got the duplex. That's the big one. Bla- uh, duplex is like famous. Though. Famous. Joan Rivers, Lenny Bruce, all that shit. Yes. Great Lenny Bruce story. Yeah. Joan Rivers did an open mic there. Lenny Bruce is in the audience, so she's like freaking out. He's the guy. She's new. She's young. She's insecure. Bombs, and she like ran out crying. They got they heckled her. They booed her or whatever it was. And then he wrote a note on a napkin. Handed it to the bartender and said, "Give it to her." And it said, uh, "He's like, you're green, but you got you got it. Keep going or something." Wow. And he said, she said it kept her going for ten years. Damn. Yeah, pretty cool. That'd Damn. be like if you know Bill Burr or somebody huge gave you a whatever cocktail napkin. So old school too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Damn. And he didn't hand it to her herself, so there was no awkwardness. He just pretty. He was. Just, she says he was the first comic to have sex appeal. Which yeah. I agree with, because yeah, it's like yeah. Rickles and Henny Youngman and Groucho and all these kind of, you know, schlubby guys. Yeah, he had like a sexiness about him. Also, he was a bad boy. Yes. I mean, he didn't, he like didn't play by the rules. He fucked with cops. Yes, exactly. He made fun of religion. He had black friends. He liked yeah. jazz. Like, he was in there. He was like a cool guy. Cool guy. Jew from upstate New York. Yeah. Heroin addict. They died so damn young. Yeah, I mean that makes you cool too. I know that's true. It, like you, it, like when you die at your peak, you always have those fam- those pictures of you looking like a badass with a cigarette in your mouth. It's yes. like your only pictures. Right. Like if Che Guevara was old as shit, it, that photo wouldn't have, wouldn't be as reproduced. Ah, so true. If Jesus got old, <laughs> yeah, there's no story. Yeah, so true. Yeah, Bill Hicks, Bill Hicks, another one. We didn't see Bill Hicks live a long, long enough to get old and have a podcast where he fucking he shits on everyone for selling out, and then he's doing Adam and Eve ads. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of the old people. Some do it great, like Bob Dylan. Seems like he's still Bob Dylan, but yeah, a lot of them just, just kind of seems get... like tinier and crankier. Yeah, which is okay. Keith Richards, though, man, that guy. Pull up a pic of him now if you can. That guy looks. I mean, he looks like a. Like an old catcher's mitt, but yeah. he he did an interview and he was still smoking. He had a he had a scotch and the hat on, but yeah. he looks like it like looks an like old treasure be attached map. to a, a Von Rodriguez's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, he's still going. I mean, what he's got this? He's got the Mickey Mantle gene, I guess. He looks cool. Well, Mickey Mantle died. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Mickey Mantle, he had Mickey Mantle had the gene to like fight through it, but he fucking he died pretty young. I oh, think. he did. I mean. I don't know, Matt. How 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 old was Mickey Mantle when he died? Wow, Richard, he looks like an old. Indian I remember Mickey chief. Mantle that whole like "Don't be like me" speech. And what? Like, Fuck yeah! Well, I mean, he was an alcoholic. I mean, I didn't know it's that. badass in your prime, but when you get older, it's it's rough. Man, he was a handsome guy too. He oh was, yeah, he was the guy. When like, I was a kid, we'd go to Mickey Mantle's for my birthday. What's that? He, had, he used to have a restaurant. Ah, yeah, that was a thing. Every every big athlete had to have a restaurant. They got the Michael Jordan restaurant steakhouse. Magic Johnson's got a bunch <laughs> of Michael Jordan had everything. He had cologne. Yeah. How old was he when he died? 63. Yeah, that's... I mean, if you're if you're a freak of nature athlete, that ain't good. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we should stop crediting him as the, you know... Well, he played through it. That was a toughness. But I'm sure it killed him, man. I mean, he mm. was he, he, he was always in pain. His, the, pretty good movie, HBO movie, 61. Did you see that? Mm. Billy Crystal made it. Mm-mm. It's uh, Thomas Jane plays Mickey Mantle, and uh, Barry Pepper is great as Roger Maris. Oh, man. And I it's about the, the home run chase, because, you know, Maris had the breakout year for the Yankees to hit 61 home runs and beat Babe Ruth's uh, record at the time of 60. And it's Mantle chasing him, too. And it, it fucked Maris up because I think everyone wanted Mickey Mantle to 
break the record because ah, he was the star. Right, right. But Marish just had the incredible season, and he was kind of like a quiet guy, and Mantle was more of like a, a star and a showman right. and would well, show up hungover as shit. There you go. I mean, that's why probably why he didn't break the record. But he's has he has, you know, crazy stats. If does, you look at his numbers, he's okay. he, was, he was a fucking killer. Does the movie show the whole partying and everything? Oh yeah, oh, like great. a part where like you could see his liver, like it's like Whoa. like through his skin, you could see that it's like bulging. Whoa, he's, he's like fucked. Yeah, I mean, pretty great legacy though. Like whenever you know we talk about Burt Kreischer or some guy who's uh, obsessed, like a just keeps going a machine. We call it the Mickey Mantle gene. Yeah, because he's just a beast. And and seven is just the coolest number because of Mickey Mantle, I feel like. Uh-huh. Like, uh, Yankees are, like, the only jerseys that or some of the only, from the few, at least, in baseball, where you don't have the name on the back. And I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of, like, old school. I like that, yeah. It's like a team thing, you know? Right. When did they go bad? You know, everybody's like, ah, fuck the Yankees. They're cocky. They buy all their players. But in the old days, the Yankees felt very good to to support. I don't know, man. Well, back in the day, there was like the Brooklyn Dodgers. There was the New York Yankees. Then there's the Mets. So it's a lot of New York teams. But uh, I don't know when they, people started hating them. I feel like... Uh, Jeter-y, maybe, that time? Well, Yankees sucked from like the late 70s to the early 90s or mm. so. They had Don Mattingly, who was... I, I'm sure we're losing people with sports. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everybody. But, I mean, I'll, yeah, the, we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, then mid-90s... They hadn't won in. So I feel like in '96, people loved them, mm. or at least in New York, they did. Yeah, but they're the they're the evil empire to any other right. city. I get it, you know, like. And then the Mets, so, something so lovable about the Mets. A scrappy underdogs. Underdog, and then they won the 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 '86. Yeah, so that's with a kinda, coked out team. With a coked out team, how cool is that? And like, they had Keith, uh, whatever Fernandez. Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, Keith Hernandez and Strawberry. Strawberry and Doc Gooden. I mean, Judd Apatow made a great 30 for 30 on them called Doc and Daryl, and it's like, dude. Yeah, they partied. They, they should both be Hall of Famers, but <laughs> the amount of drugs they did, it's yeah. insane. Damn. Ah, good times. Yeah, it's also crazy. Doc Gooden, when he was older, threw a perfect game for the Yankees, and or maybe it was a no-hitter or a perfect game, I don't remember, but he, but it was like his dad was watching him from the hospital, and he like caught it just before. He like saw it till the end and then died. Mm. Isn't that crazy? The dad died? Oh, wow. But he, that was like the last thing he saw. Damn, that's wild. Yeah, Daryl was a fucking freak. Mm. Yeah, huge guy. There's rumors he fucked between innings. Wow, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> Gets the heart going. Although I feel like I would play horribly. I'd be like smoking, like, ah, you guys go. I don't care. You're like walking to the bases because you're so relaxed. You just don't care. Yeah. Like, what's, what are we doing this for? Yeah, you do this to get laid. So if you already got laid, you're like, ah, fuck the game. I already scored. <laughs> oh, I had something and I lost it. What? I, I lost it, but it was... This is so interesting to me, but uh, really, oh yeah, dude, the fucking sixties must have been so cool. It is funny that baseball players, these players, just like give their name to everything. Like Jordan just gave his name to everything. I know, for a period. I know, and they all did. Yeah, it's just so quaint. You see those kids in the sixties and the fifties, and they got their glove, and they love, uh, they love Mattingly, and they love all those guys. Oh. But you're like. I don't feel like that is... Is that still happening? Yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, For sure, it just seems more adorable in the 50s when you're like, Mr., Mr., yes. can I have an autograph? There's something about that, and now it's like kids are like jaded, I feel like. Right, but, right. But you see stuff like players handing a kid their jersey, and okay. they still freak... I think they still freak out. I'm glad that's still a thing. It just feels like sports is almost... You know, you got CTE, and we're learning all about this negative shit. Then you hear about, like, a, he beats his wife and Ray Rice and all this shit, so you're like... I don't know. It just felt more. The less we wholesome. knew, the better it was. Exactly. I mean, it's like uh, you ever see the movie The Natural? Yeah, yeah. That's a fucking fun movie. Fun movie. Was that Robert Redford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic man. Classic. Class. I think it won Best Picture. And, and you know, be careful because a woman will ruin your career. Uh, <laughs> that's the moral true. of that story. White women. <laughs> <laughs> Something evil in you. No, that was a that was a good flick, man. And. Uh, yeah, there's something about knowing less because these guys got fucked up. Babe Ruth got fucked Babe up. Babe Ruth was an animal. He was fat, but he could fucking run. If you see the clips, that dude could move. Really? I thought he had the worst waddle in the business. No, nah, he could, he could move. Although all it right. all looks like there's old footage. It all looks like it was all sped up. 
Yeah, yeah. You ever see the footage of Jackie Robinson stealing home? It's no. like it's like the fastest thing you've ever seen. You're like, how the oh, hell? Because film back then was a little zippier. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, you ever hear about? Is it Ty Cobb who was the that racist? Yeah. They he, said he his, would try to cleat you. Whoa. He'd slide into you and try to cleat you. They said his racism was so bad it it was it was bordered on dementia. That's what a book said. Pull it up there, man. Doesn't Dan Bolger have a bit about that? Yes, that's what, where I got it. I, I looked. I can't remember the punchline, but uh, he's like, I think the bit is, you know how racist you have to be to be considered that racist in 1948 oh, or that's, whatever? Oh, that's killer. That is so funny. That's, that's, damn. Yeah, I know. That's one of those that was out there, and he he's a big baseball nut, so he, he grabbed it. Yeah, there's something about baseball. I feel like it's just getting killed in popularity. You well, that's you know, slow. Well, not just that. You know what it is? They wouldn't give the rights to let people put shit on YouTube or like on social mm. media. So that will kill you. Mm-hmm. I think from, they may do it now, but it was years they didn't do that. And other sports were doing that. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to go internet. Got to go internet. It's true. Like, I'm not a big, I like hockey, but I'm not a huge hockey guy. But I will watch hockey fights on YouTube till the sun comes up or like baseball brawls or triple plays or whatever. I, you know, I just want the highlights. Uh, and I also like the backstory. To me, the backstory stuff is like the, the the strawberry and the Mickey Mantle. I like the guy. To me, when I just see a whole team, I check out. I like hearing about when you tell me I'm watching a Knicks game with you, and you're like, that guy was a phenom and Phoenix, and they grabbed him, and it was a big fight, right. and they had to draft him over. And I'm like, oh, now I'm more invested. Yeah, because you know the people. I, I exactly. feel like that's how you get me. And I remember I watched a UFC fight with like Dave Smith, and he was just telling me backstories of these guys and like, you, you're invested you yes. know you're, they're not just just strangers they're like oh i have an idea of who they are as people completely completely that's why I like horse racing and dog racing i'm like who it's just animals running i don't get it <laughs> this, do, this, this horse was assaulted in uh 2019 <laughs> yeah. he bounced back you're like all right right, now right yeah he was molested and they gave him drive <laughs> that's what i want it's a black horse so he had struggles yeah <laughs> But, He's molested. That's why he runs so quickly. Yeah. He's trying to get away from his owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and they have great names. Coming down the line is <laughs> Diddled. <laughs> this, is the, this is the first time he came first. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I I love I love sports movies too because they they make you fall like as a kid. The Sandlot was the oh, shit. I love the Sandlot. Loved it or like shit, man. How about like, dude? Slapshot is great. We're talking Slap hockey shot. movies. So good, Paul Newman, and dark. It's dark. violent as shit. Racist jokes. And the, the movies that were those lines must have been considered racist then, because I watched it. I was like, God damn! Don't you feel like if a director or a screenwriter or somebody came out with a movie that I don't know what, what the word is, edgy or uh, irreverent? Now I feel like it would blow up because we've had so little of that. It's just right. like Nomad's Land and all this like heavy shit. That if that came out now, it would take some heat, but I think it would have a huge numbers because we're just craving it. For sure. I, I mean, by the way, Slapshot, I believe, was written by a woman. Uh-huh. Is that not what, Matt? Can we double check that? I Matt think a. it was. Well, that's funny when people are like, this is offensive. Women are coming like, this is offensive. Like, it's one of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. Yes, yes, it was. Nancy, Nancy Dow. Nancy Dow. Hell yeah. Shout Good out to her. Nancy. Well, she's born in 45, so she's uh, she's old school. <laughs> she's old school. Good for you, Nance. What else did she make? Uh, oh, that's it. Toxic Damn. femininity. <laughs> that, she got canceled. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> and she's from Massachusetts, which is also like, you know, pretty ball, balls to the wall out there. I mean, that movie, when the, when the kids just go in, the Hanson brothers go in, and they just start beating the shit out of everyone. They can't, no one on the team can play, so they just fight teams. Yeah, the and goons. They, they beat the shit out of them. And, and one of the guys on the bench goes, this is a fucking disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry, Matt. Now you're you're on fucking full duty here. But did you see that photo? It's going around the internet of this hockey player, pro hockey player, is skating and he passes by the glass with all the fans. And these two girls have a sign that says, "Hey, Jeff, do you remember we both blew you in high school?" Wow. And he's like, he's like smiling and laughing. It's a it's a great image. Wow. Yeah. There's a woman who claims she blew seven of the Phoenix Suns. Oh, wow. And they're, and they're in the Western Conference Finals right now. So she's taking credit for their success. She's like, I got... Good for <laughs> I her. I gave him a bump. Yeah. There it is. Tyler, number 19. We sucked your dick in high school. Do you remember us? And they're That's waving. Amazing. It's so fun to see women blowing guys and owning it. 
Ladies, yeah. this is what it's all about. Look at that but smile on his like face. But it's also like they might be hanging on to this a little too long. Well, of course, these are sad ladies. Imagine, but, uh, if, imagine if they're married. The husbands oh. are like, can you stop? Can you stop going to games and yeah. telling players you blew them? Right. You're ruining hockey for me. That's like my favorite thing. <laughs> they're just on TV. They're like, she fucking, she blew him? That's my favorite player. <laughs> I know. I'm going to start doing this at the ballet. Like, hey, Sylvia, remember I ate your ass in grade school or whatever? Like, we've, 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 do it to them. <laughs> We have a friend who uh, who was going out with someone, and they broke up. And she's he's a big Knicks fan, and she started dating one of the Knicks. Oh, and he was like, "I can't watch the I can't root for him. It's it's ruining the games for me. What a nightmare! That ain't that would kill me. Oh God, yeah. I mean, it'd be like if our if if our ex started uh, banging, you know, some giant comedian or something, <laughs> or like, oh, I'm blowing Bill Murray now. I'm like, ah. Oh. Come on, I, I gotta go see his movies. That's, that's we make a Groundhog Day. She blows him every. We find out that she blows him every day. <laughs> oh god! You know, there's something about that too, where it's like, by the way, if any of my exes start dating a Nick, that's fucked up because they never watched the game when I was dating you. Uh-huh. So you can't just you can't just pretend you're into it now. Or Good get point. Into, I'm having another one of these kombuchas. Do it, man. They go down easy. It's a day. It's a day drink, man. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Just got a just a nice fruity kick. Oh yeah, love it. Mm. I love the love the sound of a can opening too. What do you got on a peeve? Okay, I'm. This is a peeve against me. Oh, I'm calling out myself because I did. I caught myself doing this, and I'm not pleased with myself. Oh, turning the gun on yourself. I, uh, I. It's when people thank you before you did the thing. It, there's almost like a sense of entitlement. Mm. I did it to someone at my agency. I just said. Hey, can you take care of this? Thanks. And then oh, text. I'm I, with you. I, I, I was doing it to be polite, but I read it and I was like, ooh, I don't like that I said thanks before she said, yes, I'll do it. Interesting. I think it's a little rude. And uh, and by the way, I'm going to I'm gonna double call myself out. Okay. I wrote THX instead oh. of thanks. How busy am I that I can't write the full thanks? Double peeve, gun on myself. Yeah, you gone. That was a little Hollywood move there. A L- little bit, uh, hey, get on it, assistant. Thanks. Yeah, she wasn't even an assistant. I know, but I'm just saying, like, that's how they talk yeah. to their assistant. Yeah. Like, was... I- I'm with you. But it's, it's at least you said thanks. And... I said thanks again when she did it. Okay, that helps. I think you're okay, and you caught it, but I get it. But it, but that's a thing. It's a dick move. Yeah, it's a bit of a dick move there. Yeah. Thanks. Can yeah. you do this? Thanks. So I used to be a bus boy, and uh, our dishwasher was like this curmudgeon old guy, like old guy cigarette smoke. He had that smock on, you know, that plastic smock that dishwashers mm-hmm. wear. And one time, uh, a guy goes, uh, he handed him a rack of glasses. He goes, "Can you uh, do this rack of glasses next? Uh, we're we're kind of hurting at the bar." Thanks. And he goes, "I didn't say yes yet." <laughs> and the guy was like, "Well, I'm just saying." He's like. Wait till I say yes, then you say thanks. And the guy was like, "Okay, okay." He was just like an old, old cunt. But uh, that never, I never forgot that. So yeah, I'll, I always say thanks after. Oh, it's yeah, it's way. It, I just don't want to come off as a dick. Yeah, well, texting also gives you a little. There's some blurred lines there, so I think you're okay. Yeah, but I caught it, and I was like, I don't like that. I I, I appreciate it. I, I called my, I called the peeve on myself. Yes. See, look at that. Internalizing. Not enough people internalize. What uh, What do you got? Uh, This is a weird peeve, but it drives me fucking nuts, and I hope I haven't brought this up before, but I had <laughs> a- problem with the drinking podcast. I know. I know. It's all a blur. <laughs> but I was talking to a guy over the weekend, great guy, nice guy, but he has the phlegm in the throat, and Ugh. every conversation, it's just every sentence has that gurgle, and you go, you want to just go, clear it. Just clear the pipes, clear the throat, and then we'll start talking. But I, all I can focus on is that bubbling up in the bat. You can hear the bubble. Ah, it drives me crazy. I can't handle it. Yeah, you expect him to go, ugh, and then it just shoots in your face. Oh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it, we can all hear it. It's back yeah. there. It's it's rumbling. Ugh, it just changes the whole conversation. I, I didn't focus on one thing he said. It's And I've become... A little more germaphobic in the last couple of years, just because not like I'm like a freak, but I'm just like, ah, it's just like it's there, something's wrong, clearly. Yeah, right. I like I'll take a cold ease when the second I feel anything oh. in my throat because I just don't want to travel sick. Smart, smart. Even even like meet and greets, I'm shaking hands. I'm like, hey, can we just do a fist bump? Because I just if I shake 200, 250 hands, yeah, I'm gonna get a cold. Gonna get a cold, yeah. So That's... I just try to do fist bump, I feel like it's a little better. Wash my hands after. I never used to do that, but I'm like. 
if I get sick two less times a year, it's worth it. Of course, of course. Do you? Well, two questions. Yeah. Do you get nervous about overcorrecting with the with the Purell and the coldies and all that? Purell is not really Purell as much. I'll just use soap. I'll wash my hands. Okay, okay. But yeah, the coldies. I don't do it a ton. But if I feel something coming on. Mm. The whole thing is it shortens cold, so I'm like, well, let me get ahead of it. That's yeah. That's I just think good. zinc is good for you. Zinc is killer. Can't yeah. beat zinc. Yeah. Uh, I am so grateful. My mom just threw me in the dumpster when I was six, and just so you're never. I feel like you're never sick. Never sick. Never wash my hands. Uh, <laughs> I never wear condom. No, but you ever try? This guy helps me get through stuff. What's this? Check that out. And that's not even a sponsor. That's a free plug there. Noon. What's noon? It's basically like if I'm hungover, I pop one of those. Electrolytes. If I, have, if I have a long, yeah, electrolytes. And that one has caffeine. So when you're hungover, it really gets you back into it. Wow. Puts it, put it right noon. in the drink. It ain't cheap either. Those are like seven bucks each. Yeah, but you got a bunch of them. Ten servings. Ten servings, yeah. yeah that's not that. That's not bad. Not bad. It's, a dollar not bad. Ser- or it's less than a dollar a serving. Oh, there you go. Oh, but, this is interesting. I'm gonna say, yeah, I, I, I'll do elect, I'll do Pedialyte sometimes. I'll do Pedialyte's good, but again, you got to get Pedialyte early. Sometimes I'll wake up and chug Pedialyte because I'm hungover, and it's not the same. You got to get, you got to get it uh before you're hungover. I'm a big believer. You got to do pizza the night before. You got to have something doughy in your body. Soak it up. Soak it up, man. Yeah. All right. So those are the peeves. Yeah. Um, Clear I the throat. I, I, I had a toast. I want to remember Ooh, what it was. I love a toast. Keep some positive oh, energy flowing. I got a weird one. Please. So I'm just at the dentist, and this is mostly a dentist place thing, but it's other places will do it too sometimes. You see it occasionally. Places that have mouthwash in the bathroom. Mm, That's public? A, well, it, like yeah, a you just have a... You have like a little, sh- like a, a paper shot cup. Oh, yeah. You see, sometimes you see places have that. Sometimes a, a nice restaurant will have that. Such a classy move. That is very nice. Yeah. Cause how often I'm like, ah, God, do you have any gum? I'm on a date or whatever it is. And you're eating garlicky Chinese food, whatever it is. So, yeah, that's good. I eat a lot of garlic. I eat a lot of uh, spicy foods. I've never been out and been like my breath. <laughs> I've always thought I could use a little bump. <laughs> you know? Of course. What's it hurt? I think that's a great toast to the free mouthwash. Free, free mouthwash. Good call. We don't need the attendant. Let's not go crazy. We don't need the old black Can't guy the with the towel on his arm and a red any jacket. Race, any race. It's, 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 a- it's, any it's the race. presence that's a problem. Well, the, I feel like the racial thing makes it more guilty. I'm like, Ooh, oh, yeah. I got to tip this guy. He's got a bunch of loose mints, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I got a family. But... Uh, I just feel like we don't need the attendant. It's a forced, weird forced gig. I remember there was a guy in the cellar who used to always be like, Nick's. I'd be like, yeah. And I used to have a show in their network. He'd be like, get me a... Get me a Porzingis jersey. He was like, a, and I was like, I don't get shit for free. Yeah. So I'm like, I, he, this guy wants me to just buy him like a $120 jersey. Right, right. I was like, I don't get it for free. He's like, yeah, right. You have a show in their network. Oh. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it for free. Yeah. Like, can I take a dump? I'm just trying to shit. Now I got to get you gifts. <laughs> there was a, remember the comedy club comics and the meat packing? Oh my God. It was like the best. Great club, but it was a little hoity toity because it was in this rich area. Yeah, so they yeah. had a bathroom attendant and that was like my home club. I was there. Oh four times a week. So I knew the bathroom attendant, this Nigerian guy, great guy, but I would come out of the bathroom and he'd be like, "Woo, that was a big shit. I'm like, all right, what are you doing, Kenny? You're killing me. So now I got to give him a fiver. Just like, hey, keep that on the reps. <laughs> that yeah. was, they can't say that. I know. We were close, though. And he was like, he's like, I'm at a comedy club. It's part of it. You know, he was yeah, trying to yeah. be funny. And it was. That's fucking hilarious. Kind of a nightmare. That's that's like a personal. That should be like a sanctuary. That's a personal space. Yes. You should not be getting ball busted in the bathroom. That's. I don't care for that. I'm going to say right now, on record, not... Didn't love it. I remember I was in uh, Times Square. We used to go see movies in Times Square all the time after school. and Because uh, we could double up in those big theaters. Sure. So we could see two. Mm-hmm. And I just... I don't know what I ate, but it wasn't good. And it was like it was like a liquid dump in the mm. bathroom. And I hear a, fa- a, a father and son right outside just hearing me do this. Oh, and boy. the dad to his son goes, ooh, that boy has got the shits. And they both <laughs> laugh their ass off. And it was like, that was a pretty low point in my ooh. life. Just hearing them like laugh and mock my shit yeah. while I'm just stuck in pain. It's the most vulnerable moment of your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got one of those. Yeah. Comedy works in Denver. <laughs> I was hung over out of my mind. Because, you know, you party in Denver. It's a great town. 
great and town. I was opening for Schumer. This is how long ago this. She was headlining the Comedy Works, a comedy wow. club. And Pete Holmes was doing a college in town, so he dropped in. So he did a guest set. Back in that day, I don't, I don't know what Pete Holmes is doing now. You know, Pete Holmes from Crashing. He was like lights out murderer comedian. He was so good. I'm not saying he's not anymore. I'm just saying I don't see him around. I see him all the time in New York. Murder to guess that. He probably did six minutes and it was like, ah! like they were going nuts. They were on their And that feet. club is hot too. And that club is the hottest club. Yeah. And I was hung over. So now I'm watching him murder and I got <laughs> in my head and the anxiety and the sweat and all that. And I had like a eh. Said I did okay. I got through it, but it wasn't great. And then Schumer was, you know, Schumer, so she fucking annihilated. But at one point, she's kind of like thirty minutes in, and I had to have the hangover shit. I'm sweating. I'm shitting blood. I'm tri- my legs are trembling, and I'm shitting in the stall of the comedy club, the public bathroom. And these guys come in. They're peeing. They wash their hands. They're like, "Man, how about that tall guy? Huh, Pete? Whatever. He was fucking amazing." And then the other guy's like, "I know it." And Schumer is murdering. And he goes, "What do you think about the the guy in the middle?" And he goes. Not great. And I was like, ah, I'm in the stall, <laughs> shitting. My pants are on my ankles. I'm shitting water. I'm hung over, and I could hear it was it was soul crushing. That's that's another reason to hate the non green room toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I yeah, it's happened to me many times. I remember I bombed a, a gig. I was working with Al Lubell many many wow. years. Wow, Al Lubell, great comic. Give so, him a give him a goog. Oh man, check his Letterman's out. They're, he's so funny. And so such a, funny. And such a sweetheart of a guy. But interesting. Uh, mind yeah we're working together uh and i had a kind of a rough one opening for him and he did a great job uh, and i did not so uh-huh. i it was exact, exact same thing i'm in the bathroom toilet hear the people saying man that opener was rough and uh i'm just in there like listening to it and the part of me is like do i wait for them to go <laughs> you know yeah. do i have to just am i a hostage now in the fucking stall i have to wait for these people to stop they were just like yeah not funny oh. i walk out i was like you know what fuck it i'm a i'm a man i'm going out i went out and they saw me and they go sorry <laughs> <laughs> it was almost worse that they saw me they're like yeah. it's like they forgot i was a human being right right yes you have feelings uh, which is what the internet is that's what yeah. comments are you're like oh these people have feelings that they don't know that yeah damn you got a comment section in real time in real time and they just they hit me with the sorry i was like what could he do I like that you're like, I'm a man. I'm going out there. Like, no, no, be a man and keep your dignity. Stay in the stay in the stall, I say. Nothing nothing to gain from going out there. Yeah. You got a wreck? It's a big thing with guys. I'm a man, but it's not always good. It's not manly. It's almost like, see what you did. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this is a weird wreck. I'm going out outside the gate here, but uh, I was in uh, Texas this weekend doing gigs and San Antonio, San Antonio was it? killer. Great. Did some rock clubs. My first like rock club tour. And it was like, it was different for you. So it was like kind of a risk, kind of a risk. And yeah. it, it went well. They, they pay better. It's weird. They pay better. If you sell it out, if you don't sell it out, you're fucked. But they, if you sell it out, it's better than the club. Well, did you sell it out? We sold out of some of them. So I think it worked out, but uh, either way we sold great a city, San Antonio, great city, great people. They party. Uh, and they have some of the best Mexican food you'll ever eat. Amazing Mexican food. Yeah. Good people. Uh, the River Center's pretty. I, I loved it. Uh, but me and my my guy, I use this guy, Andrew Youngblood, on the road. He has Secret Group. He's that guy. Oh, yeah. Great comic. Yeah, yeah. Great dude. Great hang. Um, we got really shithoused one night. We both couldn't stop doing shots of tequila. We went out to an after party after the bar. I mean, it just got ugly. Either way, we had this big plan to, to float the river. That's the big thing. Instead, you float the river on a tube and have a couple high lives. I've never done this. I've, uh, I've walked the board. Uh, the is it the boardwalk? The river walk. The river walk. Sorry, I've walked it so many times. Uh, yeah. Well, this is like it's thirty minutes outside, but he's like, it's so fun. It's a beautiful day. Let's get our skivvies on and and just get some sun and and chill out and beat this hangover in the sun. I said, great. He's like, but we got to go early. All right, we'll meet at eleven. Whatever. I'm so hungover. I wake up at one, you know, I missed the day and I was like, I can't move, man. I, I'm, I'm 37 years old. I and can't how, wait, be drinking How do you like do this. shows like this? Exactly. So he's like, well, this is bad. He's like, I'm hungover too, but he's like, you're incapacitated. I was swollen and just, uh, it was bad. I never <laughs> ate and all that. So he goes, I got an idea, but it's going to be expensive. And I said, "Uh oh." Hey, did you do the the uh, IV? We did the IV. How much did you drop on this? Ah, uh, well, I, 
that's the other thing. When you're hungover, money is no object because you're just 250? like, ah, it's two fifty. Ah, I nailed it. You nailed it. And then he he was my opener, and I'm the headliner, so I'm like, ah, get one for him too. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're laying in my hotel room, and we got these two IVs, and this nice older lady is just like uh, putting us in. She's like, oh, I do this shit all day long with you fucking finance bros. I'm like, we're not finance bros. We're fucking we're artists. <laughs> yeah, we're artists. God damn it. They do so, that. On all the all the bros do that on billions. That's yes. The whole thing. Yes. And Chappelle does it on tour, too. Oh, does he? Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, like, your body, it's like, you're getting that hungover, your body is telling you you got to chill. So it's really just, it's not healthy. No, no, I wouldn't it's like, I take it. My neck's always out, and I just fucking pound muscle relaxers, and I have people tell me, like, yeah, that's a fucking Band-Aid <laughs> over a wound. You're fucking not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, but boy, I mean, it works. And, yeah. and you drank again the next night. Of, with that night we drank again <laughs> and we called the lady too and she was so nice i got her number and she was like i was like is it okay we drink she's like actually yeah you're healthier than ever like you're you're better off than you were the first night damn so we we did it all over again but uh man that shit it hurts like hell going in but yeah boy right when it comes in you're like oh my god i'm superman you can feel it going through your body and whooshing through you it's and worth it i got the 275 package Oh, what's in there? She goes, there's 250, which is the regular. That's what I got for Andrew. But she's like, you're in such bad shape. The two, the extra $25 gets you going quicker. Like, it doesn't have to process through you. It just shoots right in. I said, give it to me. Give me the VIP. This is like Viagra, but for your whole body. Yes, exactly. So Jesus. It, it For me, it just leveled me out and killed the hangover. Andrew, he was like the rock, you know? So Damn. Uh, it was awesome. But Damn. don't make a habit of it. No, no, for sure. That, that I mean, I happened one year at Mother's Day. I collapsed at the dinner table. I was so hungover, and they had to take me to the ER. And I uh, what? Yeah, and and I and I got the IV, and I was like, I'm fucking rocking. Yeah, wow, great Mother's Day gift. Oh, by she the way. was she was devastated. How old were you? Sorry, mom. Nineteen. Oh, oh yeah. man, still in the teens. Yeah, it wasn't good. Woo, boy. Maybe twenty. I don't know. I'm impressed you made it to the dinner. She was not happy. Yeah, that's uh. Those IV drips are a game changer, but yeah. you're right. They're fucking not healthy. Not healthy. I mean, you can't fuck with nature. You're right. You have a hangover for a reason, but boy, every now and then, if you're in a pinch, because we had two shows that night. and uh, No, you, I mean, that's you're saving the shows. Exactly. And the sh I did an Instagram live of me doing the IV and everything, and... So people saw it. It got a little like some buzz going. That's so good. It went on Reddit and all that shit. And then the shows sold out. And I went out there and I was like, kind of woozy. And they were like, Ah, he's, <laughs> he's fucked up. It was like my flu game. I said the j three jokes twice. You know, no. uh, you know my order. But was the off. third time they hit again. The second yeah. time they're like, "What the fuck?" The third time they're like, "Ah, oh, what the fuck?" Exactly, exactly. And we brought the IV lady. We got her free tickets, and she Whoa. came out with her daughter. Yeah, it was really cool. Oh my god. Yeah. So it was a wild weekend. But uh, Andrew, that shit works if you're sick too. I think if you have like a really bad cold, I believe it. Um. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's just vitamins and all this electrolytes like going right in you. There's no, there's no middleman. Damn. Good time. What a wreck. A great wreck. One of the best. You you were kind of you know a little skeptical going into this wreck. You're like, is is he gonna be on board? Well, it's so un it's so unrelatable. But like, it's a fucking wreck. So you know, let's be broad with our wrecks. Yes, this is, it's a hell of a wreck. Going broad, and that's a toast too to the IV lady. Toast to Andrew for thinking of it. Uh, but he was like, the show must go on. The show is an hour. What a late. name, too, Youngblood. Like, I know. If your last name is Youngblood, no one's calling you Andrew. Yeah, good. That's point. a fucking cool name. Young, just a yo, Youngblood. That's mm -hmm. a cool name. Jewish guy. You'd Damn. think he was a Native American or something, but it's Jewish. <laughs> young blood. I know. <laughs> also, a, also a good name for adrenochrome. <laughs> young blood. You know, that's what like, you know, these uh, these crazy Epstein's are drinking. <laughs> young blood. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Adrenochrome? Did I get that right? I don't know what the hell right. you're talking Matt's about. Like, right, don't I don't bring know what me the fuck this laughing with the fucking... I have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, that's the QAnon thing. Adrenochrome. They say these elites drink <laughs> right, right. kids' blood. Yeah, it's crazy. It's all crazy, but Jesus it's fun Christ. to joke about. Q, man. Adrenochrome. Q. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but this IV stuff, it's just funny that humans are so advanced that we're like, mm. we will find a way to keep getting fucked up. And invent things like this IV. Apparently, like doctors do it, 
Finance guys do it. It's yeah, I, I know. I knew a friend. He's like a friend of a friend who's a doctor, and is like, I do it to myself all the time. He's like, I'm thinking of starting a side business of it, and I was like, Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, people would, when you're hungover, you're like, you say, I will do anything to stop this. Oh. So what's 250 bucks if you got that to burn? Burn it. Think how many times have I spent money, tons of unnecessary money on a takeout or like to food delivery because I'm like. I'm so hungover. Here, here's eighty dollars for a burger and some fries, and then you get like eight diet cokes and two Gatorades. Yeah, you know, yeah. you get it all sent to your house because you're just so hungover. But money is no object because you're in pain. I'll tell you what. Speaking of takeout, what bums me out. I ordered pizza from a, like a very reputable pizza place Uh-oh. last night. Fucking delivery. The flavors were good. The pie was soggy as fuck. Uh, I cannot stand a soggy delivery pie, man. I'm a New Yorker. It hurts my soul. I'm with you. And and they feel like they got you because you're like, it's here. I guess I got to take it. What am I going to send it back? It's tough because uh, there's a place I really like. They do weird slices. It's called Pizza Collective. All Mm. right. It's a New York City spot. I'm going to shout it out. They do a carbonara slice. Ooh. They do a Casio e Pepe slice. Wow. They do weird ass slices, but I don't think it's a gimmick. I think the pizza is actually pretty good. And uh, what part of town? I don't know. Uh, it's this. like seventy second, I think. Oh, okay. It's good. It's really good. Uh, there you go. Yeah. How's the, how are the ratings there? Am I crazy? It's what got do we five think? stars is or it? four point five. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, I I think it's real solid. Closes at ten though. What the hell's that? That killed on, me last Manhattan? night. They fucked me last night. Everything's closing early, man. We may as well live in. Yeah, look at those slices, Whoa. man. Whoa, they're, cra- they're crazy creative, which I love. And look at that dough, that bun, or the the bread is so fluffy and flaky. They're crunchy slices. Ooh. I want a crunchy slice. What's with these soggy fucking slices? Interesting. I'm. I'm. See, I gotta push back. I like a. I don't like the thick. I like a thin crust. Uh. What if the thick crunch sick? I can't speak anymore. What Kombucha. if the thick crust is uh is, is still crispy though? Ah, all right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I, it's I, crispy. Yeah, that does that. It, but they all look like grandma slices. Like they're, gra- the, they're uh, grandma. The uh, the Sicilian. They're all Sicilian. To me, that's a lot of bread. I want the cheese. I want the sauce. I want the topping. Dude, but I'm these telling look you, pretty great. No, no, no. It's almost like a croissant pizza. You're gonna like it. Remember bagel bites. Bagel pizza price. on a bagel. We can eat pizza anytime. Never got into them. I mean, I, I definitely had friends who had them in the freezer, but I never, I never. Oh, I see in that bag in the freezer was like, oh. But I love pizza and I love bagels in New York. Those are like our two things. So like, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> wowed. It feels like, uh, like a hacky. If a guy was, I'm half Jew, half Italian. I'm a bagel bite. <laughs> that sounds like a hacky comedian. That's what it was. Yeah. It killed, but there were there were people in the back going. Yeah. <laughs> we were unimpressed. The snobs in the back were unimpressed. I mean, th- when I was a kid, H and H before H and H closed. I mean, my dad would go running and come back with H and H bagels. That was like our Sunday morning tradition. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're just having the ba- the freshest bagels on the planet. H and H, yeah. What happened? Why did they go under? They were the number one. <sighs> I have no idea. I have no idea what happened. And that, what what is the ultimate? Because I don't, I'm not a bagel guy. What is the ultimate bagel in New York? I think there's a few great spots. Uh, I, I like Essa Bagel. I've heard of Essa. I like. Uh, oh, S and S. I like. I love Barney. You can't go wrong with Barney Greengrass. That's, oh, it's a great spot. That's the Jew Mecca. Russ and Daughters. Oh, very legit. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh man, there's a few places in Brooklyn I liked. I mean, shit, I used to always go to the uh, Bagel Smith in Williamsburg. They're pretty solid. Mm. So you I mean, can I, tell a good bagel. Like if I, I think, I think anyone can a... tell a good bagel. I'm, it's not like I have a fucking gift. It's it's you know they're they're, they're well made. They're fresh. They're, oh. Because there are people who are like I'll never I'll never get a bagel on toast, and you're like, well, you've never had a good bagel. Mm. Interesting. If it's fresh out of the oven, you don't need to get it toasted. Okay. I'm learning. I, see, ba- it's too much. I would, I scoop it. We well, could scoop it. That's, okay. I'm, there's nothing against scooping a bagel if it's too much. But I'm just saying, uh, do you do do you do what do you put on it? I like lox and sour cream. Sour cream. I mean, uh, cream cheese. Oh, Sorry. okay. All Jeez. right. I was like, what the fuck? I almost got stabbed here with a menorah. <laughs> That was terrifying. The Mexican bagel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, man, I fucking I love a good bagel. What can I say? Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's all bread. Let's be honest. It's just you're eating bread. Yeah, but you got to go everything. So what is a challah? Challah is like a it's like a puffy bread. I don't oh, know okay. the ingredients, but it, it rises. Ah, it's like a it's like a real it's like a cloud. Oh, I don't know the challah. I, you don't know, pull I, up a picture of the challah. I hear about a challah. They always say that on the. Uh... You ever have challah French toast? No. It's fucking amazing. Oh, that looks like a marble rye. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's challah. Yeah, yeah that, no, it's that, really good. That's it's, great bread. It's like very eggy. It's really good. All right, all right. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah. that's great bread. Oh, it's oh, dude. You get a little if they if they. I don't like people that are married to just a plain challah. Like, look what they're doing here. They're making it like almost looks like a, like a pretzel challah right yeah, here. Yeah, and then you get cheese. And get stuff. innovative, baby. Oh yeah, live a little. I got a weird wreck for you, please. And this is strictly for travelers, because we're travelers, man. We're on the road every week. This has made I fucking hate hotel soap. It makes me mm. crazy. I bring my own bar of soap. I got a little travel case. I like. I don't like body wash. I like a fucking bar. I hate body wash. I'm a bar man. I'm with you. And yeah, I bring like, I just, I was on the road, I bought a bar and I was like, why don't I do this every week? You get mm. that shitty hotel bar, you can't even get it to foam. No. It's like you're trying to make fucking fire with yes. your hands. Yes, it's it's stiff and it doesn't lather. No lather. It's like putting a like a bathroom tile against your skin it's, and you get nothing out of it. Awful. And I'll check my pits after I use it and they still stink. They stink. So what am I doing here? It's, I can't, I, I'm so depressed. Just having a fucking bar in the shower, you're like, why don't I do this every week? Bought the little travel case for the soap. Mm. Makes such a difference. Doesn't that get a little slimy, though, with the residue and the wetness and the lather in there? I don't know. Has no, it... I got the case. I know, but I feel like the case gets all gooey. And... Hasn't gotten gooey at all. All right. I don't want it to get gooey. I used to keep it in a Ziploc. I used to do the same thing. The but... Ziploc? Yeah, Ziploc. That'll, get, that'll get gross. Yeah, it got gross. You got to get a case. Okay. Give me a case link if you got one. Oh, they sell them at fucking Walgreens. What do you mean really? a case link? I don't know. I, I thought I'm picturing like a cool glass cigarette. Or... Look at that thing. Could call Amazon. Get it for three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> a case link. You can't fucking Google case. I like the idea of like the old guys in the 30s had the cigarette case, and you're like soap case. It's like a brass. <laughs> Sexy little case that flips open. <laughs> well, dude, the cigarette cases look badass. Oh yeah, you got. If you have that. if you had a, not just a cigarette case, but like the personal, li that was a whole, that was a whole thing. You had a gold cigarette case. You're like, this motherfucker's rich. Oh yeah, I even like those old cop flip wallets. You know, they would flip the badge down. Oh badass! I love a flip. I stole a fireman's badge once. What? Yeah, my family went on vacation to Florida, and I, I got drunk. And I found a fireman's badge in a cab and I stole it. And I was like, this will be funny to just like whip out of my friends at parties. Yeah. And my mom and dad found it. I was like getting way too drunk all the time. <laughs> and I was high as shit one day and they found it and they gave me an intervention. And my mom <laughs> flashed the badge at me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it was brutal. She's like, you have a problem. She's like, what is this? Ah! And, I, and I was high as shit. Like, I was going to mail it back. <laughs> like, oh, you were never going to mail it back. How would yeah. I have mailed it back? I had nothing. <laughs> she got you there. I had nothing. I, and, and it's like you're trying every angle as a kid. You're like, I, 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 I don't know. I'm, you're, my yeah. mom would find cigarettes or weed. I would just be like, it's because of you. And I'd run out because I was like, I, I didn't have anything else. <laughs> right, right. You hurt me. I'm traumatized. You're bad parents. I'm calling social services. They're like, shut up. You Literally queef. give me an intervention because over fucking weed and yeah. a fireman's badge that's hilarious can you imagine them finding a fireman's badge they're just like what the fuck you had a it's not what is that called contraband like you have weed and you have like cop stuff that's yeah that's illegal like if you my mom that, finds that she's like he's living a double life uh, <laughs> and it's like so dumb it's a fireman's badge like you can do shit with a cop badge right you can impersonate what can you do with a fireman's badge you just yeah. hold it up they're like there's a fire go yeah. over there <laughs> I mean, I'm coming to this bar. I'm checking your meter. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I mean, it could work at a bar with a lady. Like, oh, I got to get back to the, the station. Well, what do you do? <laughs> Just flip that badge so the panties are dropping. They're like, you're the least Jack Fireman I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm like, they need one of us. Yes. I, I take care of the Dalmatian. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> I get the cat out of the tree. Our friend Rachel Feinstein had a friend. No, she had an ex-boyfriend who just uh, faked a limp oh, and claimed he was in the Iraq war. What? And he wasn't. He was like, ah, I was in the war. I, uh, yeah. Wow. It was really, and he just wasn't. And she, and she was just like, 
you just lied about being in the war and having a limp? And he was like, yeah. Wow, man. So that's worse than me just having a fireman's bed. Way worse. At least you have something you know, tangible. This guy's yeah. going off a fake limp. Oh, my God. This guy's a sociopath. <laughs> that's commitment, though. Commitment. The weird though thing is when he's like fucking the chick and he walks to the bathroom. She's like, "Hey, what, what was that? No limp there?" He's like, "Oh, it comes and goes." Kaiser know? Sose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The mug drops in slow motion. She's like, "Wait a second. Oh man, isn't that sad?" I was thinking about this in the shower today because all oh, we go back to movies every ten seconds. We're movie buffs. They were such a big part of our lives, and I don't feel like that's the case anymore. Now it's uh, some kids quoting like a TikTok or something, and like I'm the old boomer queef, but. But they're always there. You can always go back to them. If you want to like movies, they, they're they always there. Of course they're there, but they're so long. And I feel like people now, young oh, people long. don't can't handle that whole arc of a two-hour or an hour and a half film. I'll say this. I was, I was with the lady last night, and we're watching Heat, speaking of long. It's a three-hour movie. But so good. It's good. It's a good but movie. Yeah. She, so long. She, she could not get into it. Not it, get into it. It's like, amazing. She there's some she has something against Robert De Niro. What? And like she she it took her fucking forever to warm up to Midnight Run. It took her she's a little younger. It took her she couldn't do casino because she's seen Goodfellas and the Irishman. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So she's like, it's just the same movie. I'm like, uh, it is, but you don't understand. Yeah, I'm trying to defend Scorsese yeah. to her. And it's a true story. Yeah, in defense of the movie, but it is tough. I understand if you're like it's already not your genre, and sure. they're like, you know, Tommy did this. All you know, it's yeah, like the same yeah. tone of every right, movie. Right. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> but With uh, the music and the Motown and the yeah, the suits and the car. I get it, but and my girl's the same way. It's like she just can't get into it. And then I go, you know, this director uh, diddled a, a kid. I'm talking about Polanski. She's like, he did. And now she's googling that. She's like, now this is a movie. I'm like. What are you kidding? This guy's a genius. Come on, you're killing me. But. I turned around to Chinatown, which is like, I think top, one of the top movies of all time. Oh, forget Polanski. about, but forget you, about a but, girl on Chinatown. She loved it, but, oh. she, but she was like, that's, she could not believe it, how dark the ending was. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you used to be able to make a hit with that. Right, right. People weren't, or it's not people. I think people would still embrace it. I think it's fucking studios man i think they're it cowards is. and they they're won't cowards. make a dark movie anymore like a lot of them do bomb i guess though too like they a lot of them do bomb well chinatown was best picture i think was it yeah it's incredible it's incredible i just thought of a great sitcom for you and and your gal yeah this is how this is such a, a relatable premise it's the older guy i'm not saying older but like you're older than I her. Seven years on her. Yeah, yeah, same with mine. Exactly the same. Seven years. The attention span versus the movie guy. I mean, just you trying to show her shit and her being like, "This is boring," and I don't get. It. And he's a predator, so I can't support him. And you're like, "I know, but it's genius work." I mean, this is a fascinating. She can look past dichotomy. I mean, I mean, we were watching L.A. Confidential, and she was like, "I wish we had Spacey back." And I'm like, "Thank All you." Right. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm not, not saying what he did hero. is okay. Yeah. But I'm but, saying, yeah, I miss him a little bit. He he's was fucking. Amazing. Can we admit that we miss the work a little bit? Of course, he's in a ton of great pictures. Also, he's a talent. You ever seen him on a James Lipton show? He yeah, does like great. 20 different impressions. He does Pacino. He does De Niro. They're all killer. Oh, he's great. All the hard ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. He does walking too. <laughs> walking such hack. But yeah, I mean, no, I'm no, he, he. I love, I loved him on on Lipton. He was great, and he's like, you know, I heard he's a real dickhead, but. Uh, he is great. Yeah. I mean, it is hilarious that he plays Bobby Darren, like literally 14 years. He's like 14 years older than Bobby Darren was when he died. And he's playing like young Bobby Darren. Oh, uh, yeah, right. And you're like, this is a fucking dude that needs to be checked a little bit. A little bit of a stretch. You need you need a friend who's like, you're old. Right. You're playing right. a teen idol and you're fucking 50. Yeah, yeah. No, and he's still true. good in the movie. Like he's, Yeah, and, he's great. Because he can sing and he can dance and you're like, and then you see what Bobby Darren looked like, and you're like, it is fucked up that he kind of looks like him. Yes. But he's just old. He's old, yeah. But, man, gays are so talented. It's insane. Yeah, like, what is that? I was talking to Alex English last night, funny comic. I love about. Alex. Yeah. Great guy. And we had this big long talk. Big guy, too. Big Pistons fan. Is that right? Huge. He was at the fucking Malice of the Palace. Oh, wow. The big fight where every, with the fan, they were fighting the fans. What? He was a kid, yeah. He's a Detroit guy? Big Detroit guy, I didn't guy, even know yeah. that. Well, he, he's a cool cat, and uh, we were just talking about, he's like, isn't it weird that there 
are unfunny gay comics. I'm like, yeah, there's a couple unfunny gay comics. He's like, I know. Who's funnier than gays? Like, just the trauma. We go, we have to come out to our parents, and he's black. So he's like, and I'm in, like, the black thing, and we're, black people are very religious, so now you got that aspect. So, like, we got to figure out how to make light out of all this shit. And I'm like, that is a great point. I never thought about that. Yeah. And it's so true. But, like, that's why gay guys are so into art and, like, theater and all this shit because they, they – it's an escape. And they want to express and they go out and they sing and they dance and uh, and they do comedy. And he's like, so it's weird when I meet an unfunny gay comic because – it's like, are you kidding? You've been through so much. You can't be funny. Yeah, but just going through tragedy doesn't make you That's talented. That's a good point. That's Although, good point. I think with gays being talented in the arts, at least, it's like a lot of them rebel from, you're more accepted in the arts than you are in sports. Ah. Right? So just you could be a talented gay athlete. I mean, but one of the first, I think it's one of the first NFL players for the Raiders just came out as gay. That's how rare it is. In the arts, you're embraced. Mm, so true, I mean, you're true. and you're celebrated. So yes. it's like, do you want to be celebrated in spite of being who you are in in sports, or do you want to be celebrated because of who you are in the arts? Yeah, good point. Good point. What's the what, we had Michael Sam, but he was a college player when he came out, I believe. Oh, okay, and then okay. yeah, I think he played for the Rams for like a minute, but he didn't last long. Couple of gay basketball players. John Amici was a gay uh-huh. player. Uh, then there's uh, one of the Collins brothers is gay, I think too. Uh, I think Jaron playing for the Rams though. That's a tough <laughs> name for a gay player. You got to ram it but, in there. Uh, yeah, you know, is it Jason? Yeah, they were twins. What? Both yeah. gay? I don't think so. Thank God they weren't uh, connected. <laughs> I know, right? I gotta watch yeah. you do this gay shit. <laughs> yeah, what do you call that? Siamese. Siamese. Yeah, yeah. Is that racist? Conjoined? Is that the conjoined? There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder how Siamese got tied into that. I don't know. Mm. The what Siamese about... cats? Yeah, this that's guy just guy. came out. Yeah, Carl Nassib, first openly active player. I mean, there was a show back in the day on ESPN called Playmakers, and there was a gay player, and he was. The tight end, unsurprisingly. Ah, Not really using your imagination here, uh, writing staff. Yeah, well, but- at least it wasn't a wide receiver. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then there's uh, fucking... The, the, they were trying to do every taboo, so there's a running back who's like, been weathered and be and mm. and he like hit his girlfriend Ew. and they were like and he was like you expect me to be violent on the field and not bring that back home and we're like yes that's actually exactly <laughs> what we're expecting <laughs> right. for you to be violent in your sport and not beat up a woman yes yes exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> that is tough though because we we can still be funny at home <laughs> you know we can go back and but make it's a different joke. it's a, of course different. I mean I was talking to a, a to a porn star in the front row of my show in tampa the last week. great by the way tampa is the best i love performing there. oh yeah how was that we didn't even get into incredible it. i sent you a video of me with bobby jewel do you see that? oh yeah i didn't know who it was for a second but then i got it bobby jewel the legendary uh owner of tampa so you, gave me, you I, did end up going out with him no he came to the club okay. one night. we hung but he uh yeah he had a few in him he he uh brought us all pizza he used to run the club and he he would get sauced he was a lot of fun legend legendary guy would give you a ton of shit he would be you know what i like about you morel you're old school i'm like i think i'm just a regular guy he'd be like you could take a beat and i'm like i don't want to take a beat yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> he just shits on you he picked me up hammered in his uh mercedes convertible yeah, yeah. singing jersey boys you're just driving big girls they don't cry. Uh, You're like, all right. Toupe catches a little wind. You're like, all right, Bobby, better put that top up. Yeah, yeah. Great guy, funny guy, old, old fashioned, just crooner, drunk womanizer, like every, yeah, everything. Shit. Every time he has a breakup, I'm like, I'm like, well, it sounds like you really finally met the girl uh, that you know is good for you. And he'll be like, oh please, she dumped me this morning. And I would have left her ass in the dirt if it didn't happen myself. Like, <laughs> never has a moment where you're like, you okay? He's like, please. Yeah, yeah. Like therapy would not penetrate Bobby. No, no, no. He he's like, what's the guy? Kid stays in the picture. What's that guy's oh, name? Oh, Robert Evans. He's Robert Evans, like a scummy version of Robert Evans. Like if Robert <laughs> Evans, Florida Robert Evans. Yeah, Florida Robert Evans. If Robert Evans owns a, owned a strip club, it would be Bobby. Robert Jordan. Evans ruled man. Chinatown. There you go. Godfather, Rosemary's Baby. They're making a movie, I think, with Oscar Isaac and Jake Gyllenhaal, and it's one of them's Coppola and the other one's Robert Evans. It's behind the, the it's the what? making of the Godfather. It could be really cool. Oh man, I love that shit. I'm all in. And uh, yeah, Bobby, we had so much fun, man. Great, great to be there. Great crowds. But I'm talking to 
this porn star in the front row, and I was like, "Is it? Does it ruin sex for you? You know?" Wait, 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 what? There's wait, a porn you star in the a front. Porn star, hold on. Well, I was in Tampa. Oh, okay. I mean, still, hold on. There's a no, porn I, this is how I got row. into this. Okay, okay, I, I missed that part. Well, I'm talking to her. I was like, "Is it? Does it ruin real sex for you? Because you get paid for uh, it." Ah, yes, yes. And then uh, I was like, you know, sometimes that. someone off the stage tells, tells me to tell him a joke, and I'm like, you know, I get paid for this. Yeah. So I'm like, is that you know? And yeah, she's like, exactly. no, I still. It's like it's I. I'm better at real sex because it means more to me. Whoa. But I was just fascinated by that, you know. I think it makes complete sense. Like one time I was just years ago, but I was hanging out with a porn star in Florida, as you do, and I was like, why isn't why am I not being blown yet? You're like, <laughs> what, what, why is my dick still dry? We've been talking for ten minutes. What's going on? And I realized, like, oh yeah, that's her job, and blah blah blah. For sure. And it's the same with like these people who hang out with you. You're not really that funny off stage. You're exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. And I just got done work. Like, let me have a sip. I, I turned into one of the people I can't stand. Yeah, I, t- I totally did, and so I feel bad, and I was wrong, and all that. But like, she's got a. She still has to like you to fuck you, I guess. <laughs> but but my point is, we're funny on stage. But when we're together, or it's me, you, and Mackie, or me, you, and Veter, or me, you, and List, the we're laughing. But it, we're comfortable. We know each other. It's different. It's different. So you think she gets together with a few porn stars? She's like, do you want to just like fuck in the bathroom? I real think quick? so. Maybe. Yeah, I'd imagine. You do feel weird that they don't just like shake your hand and be like, "Do you want to go to a bloom a broom closet yeah, like right now?" And you're like, you're like, "Oh, I can't. I can't." I'm I know. I think that all the time. But and yeah. plus, they're just oozing sex. Like their tits are out. They yeah. got fake hair and like you know tattoos. We're not oozing comedy. I'm just in a shirt. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. That's a good point. Maybe we are oozing a little comedy. Are we oozing a know. little? A little bit, yeah, yeah. You know, see, look at look, Matt's like, yeah, you're oozing. We're oozing? You want to ooze a little. Just a, a hint of a news. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, isn't that weird that women find funny men sexy? You're like, really? Jerry Lewis, Jim Carrey? Jim uh, Carrey, I think. I mean, look at the tail he pulled in. I guess Lauren so. Lauren Holly. Yeah, I guess she, so. She was hot. Jenny McCarthy. He yeah, had a, he those, had a those have got to be some rough conversations. Oh, God. She's like, you're anti-vax, right? And he's like, <laughs> sure. Hold on. Let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got the vaccine right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's true. I get. I just. It just seems like such a. It's the opposite. Like, at least porn star is equal sex. Funny uh-huh. equals goofy, wacky, silly to me. It's like. Yeah. Pie in the face. Slip it on a banana peel. That doesn't equal sex to me. But, but I think it it is like. People want to laugh, man. What, yeah. you, want, you want a guy who's just brooding all the time? I don't know. That guy, to me, is kind of hot. Yeah, it is kind of hot. Yeah, like a like a Robert Mitchum, Paul Newman, kind of stoic, quiet guy. Paul Newman was hot, dude. Oh, man. That was a hot man. Hot, hot guy. But he also was hot because he would, like, all right, I'm going to defend comedy for a second. He was hot because he would play pathetic characters, too. Ooh. He was a hot... Like, in The Verdict, Paul Newman's a fucking drunk loser. Yeah, good point. And, good he, point. and like, that's, to me, is my favorite role of, of any movie he did. Really? I think it's his... I don't know if it's his best movie. It's probably my favorite Paul Newman movie. Yeah. Because it's just so... I mean, fucking great movie, man. Great and, movie. Uh, yeah, I think the fact that he could go to that place. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't you think, like... I don't know. Don't you think you get your props? Like Charlie Theron got her Oscar by going ugly. Going ugly, interesting, yeah. And in the movie Cool Hand Luke, Paul Newman. That's a great movie too. Yeah, that might be his best. Of course, but he gets into a fist fight with this guy and loses. Yeah. But you like him for it because the guy was way bigger and he just, he never stopped and, and they, he wouldn't go down. Yeah, and the big guy was like, "I got it. This is like." A bummer. I can't keep watching this guy just keep cut, getting up and getting knocked out. And he's out like he looks like Jesus when he's on. Yes. The, after all the eggs, remember? A lot of religious uh, undertones there. That's a fucking cool movie. Great movie. Best picture. Uh, also a great movie. But yeah, Paul Newman. And if you watch clips of him and his wife, what's his wife's name? I forgot. She's really, really cool, though. Cool lady. Yeah. His second wife, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was the real one. I feel like the second wife is the one that really connected, but... He, she busts his balls the whole, every interview, she's like busting his balls and he can take it and he's laughing and he never hits her back. And, uh, well, he never like shits (laughs) on her back. Woodward, Joanne Woodward. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a great, it's just great watching them together. Cause yeah. she, uh, she's, she seems like a fun lady. This, uh, Joanne Woodward. They had a good thing. Yeah. That's the famous line. Why go out for a, for a burger when you got a steak at home? There you go. Yeah. Well, I I don't love that quote because sometimes you want a burger. 
for but sure. I get it. Yeah, but you're only gonna eat steaks for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think it's less the quality of the meat and more just the variety in your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why go out for a fucking uh, you know, wild turkey when you got a fucking eighteen year old scotch <laughs> at home? I don't know. Sometimes you want a shot, I guess. Yeah. I have no I I can't explain human nature to you if you're breaking it down by drinks and food. <laughs> But women hear that and they're like, ah, like, yeah, yeah, it'd be nice, but it's also a fairy tale. All right, what do you got for a bit? We got, we, we I think we're I got going a couple here. ideas here. I, I got problem is I got a few that are hitting, so they're not worth really bringing here. Oh uh, yeah, give me, but give me something that something needs, that's uh, not hitting. Okay, under construction. Something here. I had this idea like, so I had a guy talking about aliens after the show, so oh. I was thinking about aliens. So what my idea is like, what if aliens come here and we treat them great? Like, how much would that piss off Mexicans? Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean funny. like like especially if we continue to call the Mexicans illegal aliens right and we just call the aliens aliens yeah that's great surely this has been done I feel like this, someone must have this bit well I think I might have heard the aliens thing but just, just the, the idea, Mexicans the Mexican versus right. actual aliens is a great premise if we treat them great have you heard this? Then we're gonna if we treat them if, if they're smart, we gotta treat like you know. There's gonna be rednecks. Like we gotta build a ceiling. Ah, you know? that I've never heard. Something like okay, that's great. Uh, like these aliens don't even speak the language, and the aliens are like, we do. We also speak Mandarin, and they're like, fuck, we gotta stop these aliens. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. They're taking our jobs. Right. Oh, that's great. All right, there's something there. All I right. love it. I love it. That's a great bit. Speak the language. The wall. I'm trying to think of other. Uh... Maybe we could go to the alien planet, like we go to Cancun, and oh, just like party that's there. That's fucking great, you know. Yeah. Like, and the aliens, like Jesus Christ. Then we got a Starbucks and a Spring TGI Greg. Fridays and Senior Frogs on uh, whatever <laughs> Mars. <laughs> we're just like we're just fucking in a jacuzzi. And they're like these fucking they pe these people just come here to vacation. We're struggling on our yeah. own planet. <laughs> yeah, and then you got to pay off the alien federales. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, I, I, I hit that stripper or whatever it is. It's also something funny about how we always like. Like we think aliens coming here is going to be great, but like you look at every alien movie, you look at like every every group that's come in big numbers to another place, it has usually been violent. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of just you know? human nature. Yeah, and happens. then we're like, we're like, oh, well, let's find some aliens. You're like, this could go fucking bad. Right. You know? Yeah. So true. I mean, the Irish came. That was ugly. The Italians came. That was ugly. Yeah. The Jews. It, it, it happens every every we, group. We came. That was ugly. Yes. The yes. Americans the Native came. Americans didn't appreciate it. Another thing with the alien, like, what if we go there and we try to drink, bring drugs back, and we got to go through the border, like the, uh, you know, the space border and they're like whoa 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 you got a ton of drugs here and you're like i know but i was doing them up there they're legal there like <laughs> they're legal on mars yeah we go there to get fucked up we go like i got my fake tits on mars so they did a horrible job you know <laughs> there's a lot here this is great there's something here all right i love it i love Hopefully. like an idea of a low rider spaceship bam, 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 bam. all right what do you got i'm getting too into it all right this is uh this is not as good as that i feel like that's a thick chunky bit you got there this yeah. is uh i'm just trying to work on this whole thing about how it sucks that what women find attractive about men is like kind of nice and fun and wholesome like i like a smart man I like a funny man I like ambition but what everything men like about women just biologically is creepy you know it's like tits and ass and all this shit and uh women like arms my girlfriend's like, oh, I love a man with good arms and all this shit. Well, I saw you doing pull-ups outside the studio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, first of all, every now and then a guy will go sleeveless. So you're like, well, that's just free porn. And two, when a woman likes a guy, she'll touch his arm. That's Ooh. always how you know a girl, a girl likes you. She'll touch the arm. You're like, so you get to touch the thing you're attracted to. I like tits. Like, how fucked am I? Like all the things that men like about women are like private parts or or you know what what's the word uh inappropriate interesting but the arm you like women like arms she's like oh I love a good good arm veiny arms muscular arms fit arms you got an arm all day long but uh you know I like uh, you like a butt or whatever you can't can't yeah. focus on the butt. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't be consoling a woman by grabbing her tits. There, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I buy you a drink? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Is there anything there? Yes, it's like you. What you like about 
the thing, but there are they are, women like dick too. I know, but if you send a dick pic to a woman, she's like Jesus. You, can, but you think you can send an arm pic? Yeah, I guess you can send an arm pic. I guess you can send an arm pic. That's a little weird to be it's like. A little weird. Check it out. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know. I just like uh, like you know, girls are like, oh, I saw this guy at the gym. He was ripped. But it's like the things you like. But if you see a acceptable. woman at the gym and she looks stacked, you're kind of like Jesus. Like you're trying. Yeah, to that's, too. True. So that's, that's true. That's true. But there's something about like the touching. The, the arm touching thing. is interesting. I think that's something. You like, could you touch the arm to show you like them. Yes. There's no part of you I can touch to show I'm interested because you already know I'm interested. Aha! Uh-huh. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Just me approaching you is yeah. enough. You have to like. You have also to buy her a drink. Buy her a drink. They'll play with her hair. Yeah. I can't touch myself to show I'm interested. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's yeah. good. That's good. I can't be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's too on the nose, but uh, I feel like there's something there. Touching the arm to show you're interested is interesting because that's like direct. That's like a direct it's line. It's so right direct. Yeah. You're that part the arm. is getting uh-huh. something. You laugh. <laughs> Yeah, women. I think you may have to just go that straight up, where it's like they touch the arm, like ha ha ha, and they touch the arm. Yeah, you can't. They can't say a joke, and you're like ha ha ha. You, I can't touch what I like when you tell a funny joke. Right, right. You say something funny, I just touch it, and I'm like ha 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 ha. Something there. I don't know. I'm trying to. And, think and the like, hair flip is good too. I like the hair that. flip is interesting. They they flip their hair. Every guy is taught that if a girl touches your arm, she likes you, and then the hair touching is it means she likes you. Whenever I see a girl do it when she's talking to me, I'm always like, she must have like a. A, a twitch or something she must have like <laughs> a nervous thing you know what i mean yeah i'm like does that make sense to you like why are you touching your hair yeah but i i do think that but i also know like oh i think i got a shot here but also when a girl touches your arm you flex do you ever do that i have a bit about this where she, oh she, really it's different than yours but i had a girl break up with me and she touched my arm to console me and i flexed which was like a real fucking low point in my life yeah like i thought that was gonna change her mind <laughs> like she touches my arm she's like wait a second right i didn't know you could curl 8.5 this changes everything <laughs> yeah yeah definitely a low point it's a flex thing i bet women are the same way like if you touch a woman's stomach like all right i'll see you later and she's like yes sucks in. yeah whatever you're insecure about yes for sure. yes Interesting. Okay. That's, that's a different bit for sure. But that uh that could tie in. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll play with this. I'll yeah. noodle. Oh yeah. All right. Hey. So let's, let's plug some dates. Oh, Good subscribe app. to our Patreon. Uh patreon.com slash we might be drunk pod. We're, we're dropping gems. Yes. You know, we're gonna make a nicer studio here. We're loving working here at Gotham Studio. Thank you, Matt. This has been killer. Uh, throw some live dates, Mark. And you saw the you saw the whiskey tasting. So, uh, folks, it's, it's coming. It's coming, baby. And you're all a part of it. And we're gonna get a label and a distributor. And we we already the the wheels are in motion. Mm-hmm. We're we're drunk driving. Uh, hot dates. I don't know when this comes out, so I'll go real future. Uh, let's see. Toledo Funny Bone, Houston Improv. Mm. Philly Helium, that'll sell out. Love Philly. Philly rules, man. Buffalo Helium, yeah. Dayton Funny Bone, Appleton, Wisconsin at Skyline, Arlington Improv, Brea Improv, Albany, West Palm Beach, Comedy Connection in Providence, Madison Comedy on State, all over the road. What do you got there? It. Sloppy Jalopy. Madison Comedy on State, the 8th through 10th, uh, the... 15th through 17th, I got Oklahoma City. The 23rd through 25th, Nashville, Tennessee. We might, we might add a show there, so stay tuned. We got uh, moved governors in Levittown to Belmore, so the brokerage Ooh, removed it. I like the uh, But that's going to be killer the 30th through the 31st of July, first weekend of August. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. Then we, um, uh, we got uh, Comedy Club of Kansas, Missouri, August as well. Portland Helium. The 19th nice. through 21st of August, and we got the last weekend of August, Royal Oak, Michigan, one of my favorites, Boston, Philly, samurel.com slash shows. Can't wait. Can't wait to be, keep hitting the road. I'm loving it, man. Yeah, the road is back. The crowds are coming out. People are talking. There's a buzz about the pod. It's only going to grow from here. We got our own whiskey. We'll get some merch cooking. And check out our specials. We're on YouTube. Give us a like, a number, a comment. Be positive for the love of God. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Keep drinking. We might be drunk. We 
might be drunk As long as we are hanging out You know we might be drunk Raise a glass, let's talk shit Pet peeps, Rex, and a bit Maybe drunk We might be drunk Yeah 